Happy Halloween, and welcome to Ask Him on Our Productions, episode 289, the series where I answer your questions. If you have a question for next week's episode, leave in the comments section below. And I'm sure you're all wondering what kind of candy I hand out for Halloween now that I bought a house and like actually have to buy my own candy to hand out on Halloween or be that person that turns their lights off and doesn't hand out candy. I'm going to hand out candy. Anyway, we got some full-size bars. We got Hershey's, Reese's, and Kit Kat, and I bought a bunch of, like, backup candy. I don't know how many kids are going to come. Anyway, uh, just a warning this year, razor blades are out, but some weirdos are handing out Lego clone troopers, and inside the bags, they have those dirty helmets with the holes. So just a warning. Don't want to get caught with those. Just a nasty surprise your kids might find in some of those bags this year. Our first question comes from Rudolph, and he says, with the new sets in 2024 that include a figure of an obscure or odd choice character, Fives and Malik, could this format remain for more time to get more characters? characters that otherwise would never get seen in minifigure form example boss nass i'm gonna be honest i don't think i know four of the other characters like just by the name maybe if i saw them i'd know who they are but like those are really obscure characters my guy regardless while i really appreciate and love the enthusiasm i as a lego star wars fan don't share that same enthusiasm i don't think this is a possibility at all my dude i don't think that uh we are gonna see this continue necessarily because it's simply a 25th anniversary thing like as neat as it would be to get a random figure in every set ever that wouldn't otherwise exist I just don't think it's feasible I just also don't think they're gonna do it because again this is an anniversary thing with these extra figures much like we saw in 2019 with the 20th anniversary minifigures it was an anniversary thing and that's where I think the promotions like May 4th promos and the Venator promo that we saw uh, come in and where I feel like Lego it has a big shortcoming there where you know we see the new leaked Galileo promo what the Galileo promo is, is what, you know, similar, you know, same idea, minifigure and build, is what we should have gotten with the Venator, you know? Maybe not necessarily tied to the Venator, but released at the same time as the Venator, you see what I mean? We just could have so many cooler things that opportunities are being passed on over and over and over again, and uh, I think, you know, enjoy the 2024 thing while it lasts with the anniversary figures, but don't expect anything further in future years until maybe 2029 when it's the 30th anniversary. You know, they could always find a reason to do more anniversary figures. They could say, you know, 2024 five is the 20th anniversary of episode three so you know all these other sets are going to get episode three figures that you know maybe it's a you know empire strikes back set but here's an episode three figure whatever like that sort of thing could happen the samuel berg says have you seen the new dune set which includes the gigantic waist cape ouch yeah so if you guys haven't seen the new lego dune ornithopter i don't actually know the name of it might be the ornithopter but either way it looks really really sick it has some really cool functionality to it with landing gear and little flaps and things you can tell my dune knowledge is not very high i've never seen the movie or anything but honestly this lego set might make me get into it i might watch the movie just so i can buy this lego set and actually enjoy it because it looks like one of those things that is incredibly enjoyable i've seen a lot of positive feedback about this set and that's a good thing lego should be making Making good sets with good quality minifigures and this seems to be that type of set i believe the set costs 165 dollars however if you were quick enough target when they put it up for pre-order it was only 150 dollars which unfortunately does mean this set is another victim of lego's price increasing late in the game like this was going to be a 150 dollars set but then they bumped the price to 165 just because because they weren't going to make enough money already you know that's what's happening with a lot of lego sets right now so this unfortunately we can prove is another victim of that otherwise it seems like a fantastic set that all Dune fans are going to love and in the Star Wars sphere of things of course you bring up the gigantic waste cape and that was my immediate reaction just ouch while Lego Star Wars designers and certain fans have been busy virtue signaling about how we can't get waste capes in Lego sets anymore because they're for kids and they can't sit down which I proved false two episodes ago in Ask MNR where you can see Captain Rex from 2013 could clearly very easily sit down on four studs with no problem with the waste cape uh, they include the biggest waste cape in the history of waste capes for this dune ornithopter set which puts a smile on my face because it's more ammunition you know every day the clone video just gets better boys so one of these days anyway uh the gigantic waste cape and the new dune ornithopter ain't that just amazing and the best joke that came out of it i think though is that the reason lego star wars really hasn't had waste capes lego need to save the entirety of their cloth supply from 2021 2022 and 2023 from lego star wars to be able to make this giant cloth cape for this Dune minifigure, which I can't even name. Grandma Sturg says, is there any complaint you made about an older set that you regret saying? I honestly feel like most of the times in my reviews, what I'm doing is making observations about things. And to me, it's pretty cut and dry. Like 
does this thing look like it does in the movie? Yes or no? And like, I'm not going to regret looking at something, comparing it to the source material and saying no when the answer is no, you know? So generally with most of my reviews and most of my observations about sets and opinions, you know, like I'm not going to regret what I say because one, it's an opinion about a Lego set. Like I'm not making some profound statement about humanity or anything that actually matters at the end of the day, which people like to use as a straw man argument. But I do regret kind of like the initial knee jerk reaction to a set like the First Order ATST that everyone kind of dogpiled on. But as I've looked back over the years, and I think I've said this, you know, over the past couple years, this isn't the first time I've probably come around to the set and talked about it in this light. But the First Order ATST, as much as it's chopped up to be the worst Lego set ever, it's just not. It's a perfect representation of what we saw in the movie. And we all know comparison is the thief of joy and the First Order ATST was maybe the biggest victim of that in LEGO Star Wars history because it had to follow up the Rogue One ATST. So $40 for this set and $40 for the First Order ATST. And what ended up happening was with the first order ATST, you didn't get a head, right? You just got like the bottom little nub of the head, you know, just above the neck, and that was it. A little platform with it, same amount of minifigures, same price, but significantly less stuff. And from that perspective, I do think the set was not as good of a value as this set, but it was not a bad Lego Star Wars set. Now, The Last Jedi is a bad movie and all that jazz, but the set itself, you know, when it comes to its source material, it kind of hits everything it needed to hit for a LEGO Star Wars playset in 2018. Out of all of my reviews I've ever done, if I ever redo the First Order ATST review, that one will probably be the most different um, from my original review in 2018 to what I would say nowadays, five years later, I look back on it in a much uh, nicer light than I think when it first came out. Next question from It's Benzie wants to know what is the most expensive set and minifigure you own? I think the most expensive minifigure has to still be Cloud City Boba Fett, although it could easily be Gold C-3PO. It kind of depends on uh, where the market places those two. They're kind of back and forth on what I feel like is the most expensive. I think a sealed Gold C-3PO 3PO is more expensive by a nice margin at this point though. So realistically, the sealed gold C-3PO that I have at probably around $2,500, give or take, it just kind of depends on what the most recent sales on sites like eBay and Bricklink and whatnot are. But I think that sealed gold C-3PO is easily the most expensive minifigure that I own. Now, when it comes to the most expensive set I own, we're gonna take out promotional sets like Comic-Con exclusives and sets like the New York Toy Fair 1999 thing that I paid an absurd amount of money for. Like those would you know, be the most expensive sets. But out of sets that I currently own, I think like current value and and the most money I've paid for a Lego Star Wars set has to be the 2001 Darth Maul. This thing sealed in box as of late 2023 cost me and is worth about $3,500. That is absurd. That's about 2,333 Costco hot dog soda combos that I could have had, but I wanted to have Darth Maul instead. So uh, yeah, Darth Maul, just an absurdly valuable, like actual Lego Star Wars set, not a promotional set or item or anything like actual set that I own. This one right here uh, has become the most expensive very recently. Danny says, is Lego a kid's toy? We can go deep with this or we can stay really surface level. Um, I'm gonna stick in the middle here uh, and say that there are some sets that unequivocally are kid's toys. Lego at its very beginning was a kid's toy. I think the market for Lego has clearly, clearly, clearly shifted. There's a lot of people that for some reason wanna deny that, even though they are the people that are the reason that it's not a kid's toy, which is like incredibly confusing to me. But um, yeah, it is and it isn't. And you know, that's not a necessarily bad place for Lego to be, but I think the sooner Lego realizes that there are a lot of people and they have kind of realized that, but the Star Wars team especially needs to realize that there's a lot of people that just want good quality stuff for their money. And, uh, you know, in some cases you get that, in some cases you don't. I guess they do know this and should know this, but like even when it comes to a set like a micro fighter, like they know that older adult fans that are price conscious or price sensitive um, want to buy sets like that for the figure specifically. And for that reason, they often do get really nice minifigs in micro fighters. So it's like you can have something be a kid's toy and have it have good high quality stuff. And so like the more of that we get from Lego Star Wars, the better ultimately, I think. And they should really uh, strive for that, you know, trying to create both a good kid's toy and a good collectible because it can easily and has been and will continue to be both. Legend Burn Shell says, would you be happy if Lego started putting less minifigures in the sets if the minifigures became higher quality with leg, foot, front and side printing, torso, front and back and arm printing? I don't think 
we as you know consumers that are already paying a lot of money for Lego sets should have to compromise on something like this. So I don't think I would necessarily be happy if we started getting less minifigures when I feel like Lego Star Wars already gets squeezed on its quantity of minifigures per set compared to other themes like Harry Potter and superheroes. Like you just look across the street and you see a $110 set with 10 minifigs versus a $140 Star Wars set with five. And it's just math at that point. It's like, hey, why didn't we get 10? You know, where's our extra eight clone troopers or whatever the, you know, set may be. And so I find that sort of thing frustrating. And maybe the fact should be that the Star Wars figures as they exist now should be higher quality because they are lower in quantity, but they don't seem to be. So, you know, there is the argument that superheroes doesn't get leg printing a lot. And I do see that, but ultimately Lego's making billions of dollars. And I don't really care about any of the little side arguments that people want to have about it. Like Lego should just be giving us better stuff for our money. And that's what I want at the end of the day. So higher quality figs would be nice. But if it comes at the cost of like $140 gunship only having three mini figs, I, I can't say that's a good trade-off for anyone. Interesting one here from user says, is it worth buying the TIE Advanced prototype set for $105 sealed or the 9488 Elite Clone Commando Battle Pack for the same price? I think if you can get that battle pack for $105 today sealed, you should be taking that deal every day of the week because that battle pack, I believe, has become the most expensive LEGO Star Wars battle pack on the market or on the secondary market. It's absurdly expensive. In fact, it's gotten so expensive I haven't been able to keep up with the price, but I know it's worth more than $105, so we're gonna look it up. Whenever I want a rough idea of the value on something, I hop on eBay, put in the lowest price, buy it now, condition new, I guess unless I want a used one, but usually new in box, cheapest would be 140 bucks, therefore $105 seems like a pretty dang good deal. Uh, yeah, this set has become absurdly, absurdly expensive at around $140, $150 sealed in box. I also think it's just worth it to have two of the cooler LEGO Star Wars clone troopers that have ever been made. It's also a pretty nice build, nice to have the commando droids, although those ones are, are like two or three dollars each they're not particularly expensive you know i say go for the battle pack next question from sorry says have you seen the rumors or leaks for the new star wars mech sets leaks of chewbacca grievous and sabine were on lego life recently love the content keep it up so lego life is like lego's instagram and it's like heavily monitored and i don't know i i don't go on it let's just put it that way but i highly doubt it's real leaks on lego life i just I doubt that we're getting a General Grievous mech. That's where I really draw the line right there. There's no way they're gonna make a mech that can hold a General Grievous. I just don't believe it. It's also a weird lineup. Chewbacca, Grievous, and Sabine have nothing to do with one another versus the existing mech lineup where we had the Stormtrooper, Boba Fett, and Darth Vader, which... Were those the original three? No, they weren't the original three helmet sets, but they were helmet sets, I guess. The bigger connection, obviously, being that they're all Imperial related. So I'm kind of thinking, you know, the next mech lineup, if they do another three next summer, would also be related, whether it be clone troopers or more Imperial or more Rebellion stuff. Not that it has to be. It's, you know, a very small sample size with mechs and Lego can change their philosophy on things like that at a moment's notice, just like they could with waste capes. Typically, though, when someone asks me if I've seen a leak and the answer is no, it's probably just not a trustworthy leak. And for that reason it's probably just not real and that's why no one in my circles is talking about it um and you probably aren't seeing it from a ton of other you know sources either so you know don't trust everything you see on the internet is uh rule number one i'm gonna put my guy tyler on blast for just a second he messages me the other day and he goes does this match any known box art and it's a picture of a phase two clone trooper and a battle droid and i'm immediately like is this a joke like April Fool's, but it's like late October? Someone's pulling your leg or you're trying to pull my leg, but I don't think you're trying to pull my leg because this isn't good enough to pull my leg. And I look at it and I'm like, I mean, the battle droid there is from the ATT -E box and the clone trooper there on the bottom half with the torso and the legs and the weapon is from the clone command station. And the helmet on top is clearly a 212th helmet that's been photoshopped to not have the orange on it, but still has all of the uh, like dirt markings on the helmet that are present. And on top of that, it's at a very weird angle that Lego would never put on a box art with the helmet like facing forward and down. It's really, really awkward. I don't know why the person that edited it together did that. And then the most obvious thing that makes this fake is the person who photoshopped the figure left the most jagged lines I've ever seen. I don't know if this was a legitimate attempt to make a fake leak, but it is legitimately probably one of the worst that I've ever seen. Um... So yeah, I just, I was laughing my butt off this weekend at that one and I thought you guys would get a little giggle out of it too. Don't believe everything you see on the internet. It's not all true. You know, that set might be coming out and the clone trooper might have helmet holes and look kind of ugly, you know, you never know. But that picture is not real. We might get a General Grievous mech, but that leak from that person on Lego Life 
probably isn't legit, you know? So fake Lego leaks, keep your eyes out, love them. EMV Brick says, what is the biggest case of buyer's remorse you've ever had for anything Lego? On the flip side, what was something that you've been very hesitant to buy but had no regrets afterwards? Biggest buyer's remorse by far is in like 2014, I think. I bought the 2008 Death Star instead of the Super Star Destroyer. And at the time I was super excited about having the Death Star and it was like a 50-50 choice for me in the Lego store. And it was like, all you know, gotta pick one. It's all I have the money for. It's all my money, you know, saved up, ready to go. And I chose the Death Star. Ultimately, that was a set that I sold years later to be able to buy the UCS Millennium Falcon when it came out in 2017. And I also realized I would have much rather had the Super Star Destroyer because it was a much better, cooler model to me, you know, as years went on. So I made a bad decision there. Definitely had a lot of buyer's remorse and now I own both. So it's okay, whatever. But like for a while there, I was uh, rather upset with myself in the past. I couldn't think of an answer to the second part of your question though. So I'm sorry about about that. Gutterball Studios says, how does your family react to your Lego collection videos, etc.? Do they think it's still a kid's toy or do they respect the grind? <laughs> so generally in life, most people think it's really cool. And you know, I think that goes for probably many of you out there when you show anyone in your family, your Lego collection, most people are like, oh, that's neat. Oh, I recognize that one. And the biggest thing or funniest thing that I came across is uh, one of my grandmas would always come into my room and be like, man, Legos have come a far way since I was a kid. Like, like I swear it happened like three times, year after year. Like, it, like it was not a one time I said the same thing multiple times. I thought it was the funniest thing. I was like, yes, they have. <laughs> yeah, so I always just loved that, like good, good interaction there, I guess. Um, what I find more interesting personally is how like some of my friends react. I know you asked family, but like maybe not even friends, but people I play basketball with. Cause that's like, People that play basketball might not necessarily be Lego people, and they might find that as like an edge to like bully you on the court with, you know? And so I used to play pickup basketball with this guy named Mike, older guy, and like he would just make fun of me for making Lego videos. Not like, you know, tongue in cheek, like haha, not excessively like mean about it or anything. It was all lighthearted, whatever. But, you know, then eventually I was like, hey, Mike, I made you know, X amount of dollars this month making Lego videos. He's like, ah, oh, you got like Lego money now. And like, you know, then the dynamic changes. He's like, you know, if you're buying a Mustang with your Lego money, good for you, man, <laughs> or something, something like that, you know? Um, and so I also think Lego has obviously become way more accepted as like an adult thing. And, but that sort of stuff and the stuff that I do, whether you want to lump it in or not, I don't really care. Uh, generally is much more accepted by everyone. Like most people just don't care anyway. Like they just find stuff cool, whatever. Where I moved recently, I obviously played pickup basketball with new people. And I kind of try not to tell people about my YouTube channel that I don't know. Like sometimes people come up to me like, hey, what do you do for work? And I'm like, marketing. I kind of stole that from Taylor on PKA. He just tells people marketing, online marketing. And like no one like asks questions generally, you know, versus if you say you're a YouTuber, then you got to be like, well, yeah, I do this and this. And, you know, it's a little bit more in depth. And sometimes they just don't want to get into it. But one time I was playing with this like group of Asian guys and I'm like, yeah, I make uh, YouTube videos. And they're like, oh, that's cool. And I like told them my channel. And then one guy comes back like the next week. He's like, I love your YouTube channel. <laughs> and I just interactions like that I enjoy and generally have found myself on the positive end like 100% of the time of like telling people about what I do and like it being accepted, I guess. Um, I do feel bad every once in a while I see the comments where kids and or people are just like, yeah, man, it's a, it's a tough world out here when I talk about my Lego collection or, you know, people bully me at school and this and that. And I've, I've always just felt really bad about that because it's not the experience that I have generally had. Maybe I can take it better if it's something that's like tongue in cheek, like, you know, Mike at Westbrook basketball court, you know, like it's just not a big deal to me either. And at the end of the day, stuff like that's all about the laugh anyway for me so like I can take the joke about the Lego stuff like it's just not a big deal to me kind of got a little off track there but I hope you enjoyed the answer nonetheless our next question from Papa NFC says what is your KD in Warzone now this is a multi-word answer uh it's 4.0 just about in resurgence I I spent about 12 13 years playing call of duty as the only game i play basically i just don't care to play any other games that's why i realized i shouldn't care to play lego star wars the skywalker saga and minecraft and all that i basically dump all my time into one game kind of like how an nba player would you know dump 99 percent of their time into playing basketball instead of ice hockey you know i just i want to be good at one thing and that's how i view video games so uh yeah about 4.0 in resurgence although in call of duty blackout i had a 7 kd so Maybe next year. I'm gonna I'm gonna work hard, try to get better. Don't come to my house, but like for the kids that come to my house on Halloween. Come on. You got some good candy here. <laughs> Brick Reporter, with the most upvoted comment from last week's episode, therefore I guess I have to answer it, says, have you ever had a girlfriend? 